Alrighty, yesterday we did a symbol uh, for a test resistor. Today we're going to make a sample footprint. Now I'm going to keep this um, really simple uh, just so I can introduce the ideas and the concepts and all those kinds of things. Really want to dive into some of the more advanced uh, stuff a little bit later. For the most part, if you're making really, really simple and common parts, there's a web uh, tool that Eagle uh, started using a little while back that, that uh, actually works reasonably well. But uh, you do have to learn how to make footprints on your own because there's a whole lot of packages that... Um, you can't make on the uh, you can't currently make on with the online tool so let's let's shoot for the basics here so let's make a test resistor i just clicked on the oh, resistor um so i just clicked on the add footprint it's going to ask me what name i say okay and then i say yes and it's going to pull up a blank canvas just like we saw with the uh symbol and um the grid here is essentially based on the dimensions used in your data sheet so this isn't critical like the um, like the symbols are you can pick whatever is convenient for your data sheet and I'll show you that right now so this is a little thing that I pulled off of the internet it's it's, it's not the greatest example of a of a footprint for an 0805 resistor which is what this is by the way an 0805 resistor a surface mount part um, but the way it's dimensioned is going to be um, uh, a good example. This is a pretty common way of dimensioning things, but Eagle makes this a complete pain in the butt. Um, so, it, for sure, the drawing tools in Eagle are uh, marginal, if I'm being generous, uh, because they dimension everything from the only from the center of the pads. So this dimension here, it says 1.3. You can't tell Eagle, oh, I want it to be 1.3 from this edge to this edge. You have to figure out where the center of the pad is, which is half of this number, and then if we want the the whole part to be in the center um, uh, origin, which we do. You have to cut this in half. Anyway, let, let's, let me show you. Let me show you. I'll go back to Eagle. So here's our center origin. And just like the symbol, uh, for a number of different reasons, we want our uh, finished part to be right smack dab in the middle at this zero point. So right now it pulls up in mils. Uh, our data sheet is in millimeter. So I'm going to open up the grid and say I want a half millimeter grid. And I want the sub to be, I think 0.1 is probably safe. And say, okay, great. So now we need two pads for a resistor. Um, doesn't really matter which ones they are. But um, this is a pad for uh, with a hole in it. And here is a surface mount pad right there. And up at the top, you can make all of the little, uh, decide how tall and wide and, and all that kind of stuff. But for now, I'm going to put this here. It's automatically trying to place another one, so I'll hit Escape, get out of that. Right-click, Properties, and it pulls up my little box here. And so now I can uh, figure out where it's going to go and how big it's going to be and all that stuff. So let's start with how big it's going to be. Um, so uh, it's pretty easy to look on the, the data sheet here. It's 1.05 by the X. You actually have to type in the X. There's no separate boxes for X and Y, bizarrely. Um, and the height is 1.3. Um, the layer is referring to the copper layer of the board. It can either be on the top or the bottom. 99.999% of the time you define parts on the top layer. I'm not even sure why or how you would define it on the bottom. It would kind of mess things up. Roundness is how much it's going to round off the corners. And it, electrically, who cares? The, the biggest uh, reason to use this is because uh, on smaller parts, it helps the solder paste release from the stencil a little bit better and 20 25 percent is kind of my go-to uh, for a part this size we want thermals we want the the uh, stop mask to automatically be generated we can go over that in detail later cream is referring to the solder paste and we want that uh, to be generated uh, uh, the all the geometry for these to be generated automatically so if I hit apply it just gives me kind of a preview so we got the the right size uh, the little dotted line or the dashed uh, kind of hash marks out here is referring to the stop mask and the solder paste layer but now we need to put the position in here so if you you can't really tell but here's the the center the zero point and when it's asking for the position, it's asking, it's referring to the center of this, of this pad right here. So this is where you actually have to get a calculator, pen, pencil with most data sheets. Um, some, you know, sometimes it's easy to do it in your head, but um, 
I kind of did it for you. Um, here's the little graphic. This is, you know, an example of what you get in the data sheet. And I, I kind of took note here, the pad width, the height, the center, center space as it's called out. But to, to fi figure out the center, you have to figure out half the width of the pad, um, half of this center space, and then um, add those together. And uh, if this is zero, then it's negative this direction, it's positive in that direction. So this is, these are the calculated values for the, the center. Um, it, I, I can't believe that this extraordinarily simple thing does not exist in Eagle, uh, but it doesn't. So 1.175 is the number we're looking for, both negative and positive, so we can type that in. Oops, hang on, wrong button. Uh, this one. Okay, so minus 1.175, and the Y is going to be zero. That'll keep us in the center. So there you go. So now we're at the right uh, the right position and uh, the the SMD size, the pad size is right, it's on the right layer and all these other things are looking good. So we'll say OK. And we need a second one for the other side of our resistor. And instead of doing that all over again, I'm just going to right click and say copy. And it gives me an exact copy with, you know, the, the attributes and all that stuff. But because of the way I have my grid set up, it's not going to snap directly uh, to, the, to the right spot. So again, I'm going to right click that and just adjust the, the size, 1.175. This is the number I had in my little spreadsheet. Everything else stays the same, and there you go. So now we have the pads correctly positioned, and uh, the other things that you're going to want on this is like a silkscreen uh, designator to show you how, uh, you know, uh, where your resistor goes or the orientation that it's going to be in, so that's pretty simple. We'll pick the... Uh, the line tool and uh, let's stick with that width that's fine but it automatically selects copper uh, it can you can pick any of these things but for something that's going to print um, on the silk screen uh, we want the layer 21 uh, which is T place for top place and I'm just going to kind of freelance in a, um, a box here and again this is this is only an example this is not a really great design um, Escape gets you out of that, and now we have our little box. So this will actually be physically printed on the board because it's in the T-Place layer, uh, and that's good. So now we want a name uh, for the thing. So just like the symbol, you use the greater than and type in name in all caps, and the greater than tells you that it's a, a an attribute, uh, and the attribute that follows is name. So whatever you name this thing in your schematic will follow through, and Eagle isn't going to print name on your board, it's going to print whatever name you gave it. Um, so we'll say OK and tentatively place it up there. For now, that is way too big and we're going to change it. And we're going to put more text down here. And it's, it's just I can just keep on placing these things all day long until I hit the escape key. And this one, obviously I don't want name twice. I'm going to right click that, select properties and uh, say value. Uh, there's about a 0% chance I'm actually going to print the values on my circuit board. It's just kind of an example. Um, and there you go. So th this is the, the very basics of, a, of an 0805 uh, resistor uh, footprint layout. Uh, but I'm going to make one quick little change before I go. Uh, and by changing the, the size of the text, you know, I have my own uh, internal uh, standards. And it calls for the text to be done in a certain way so it all looks the same. So I'm going to switch over to inch because I call out mine in mills and I will right click that one and you can change the size of it. This is the height. So my standard is is uh, 40 mils or 40 thousandths of an inch. The ratio is how thick the line is relative to the height. And in my case I think I've been using 15 percent I think. Um, the rest of this stuff we can kind of skip for, for the sake of time when I say OK. So perfect. That's the size that I want. Um, it's actually it's small enough to be out of the way and big enough um, to be printable. It, much smaller than that. Some board houses can't do it. So I want to copy that uh, size, all those and the angle. So I'm using this paint roller to copy the attributes of this one over to that one. Excellent. And then I will use the move command to kind of 
you know, trim it up or whatever. Now you can move all of these things can kind of move around once you've once you've laid it down. The, the name and the value can move anywhere you want after you've put it on your board. But that's essentially it. That's the very fundamentals of making an extremely simple footprint. There's a whole lot of uh, additional details to go over, but now that we have a symbol and a footprint, the next thing we're going to do is put all this stuff together and make an actual component that we can use in an, in a real design. So we'll see you then.